everybody and welcome to Stitch Must Day 11! In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this super wine gift bag. It is so easy, I'm talking a five minute make, so why not Go ahead, make loads of these and give a really nice bottle of wine to someone, maybe a teacher, maybe a friend, a really, really quick make. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All you're going to need is two pieces of fabric, so one for the outer and one for the inner. Both of them measure 17 and a half inches, just double checking, and uh, by 13 inches. So you'll end up with two of those. I've just gone for the same fabric for the lining and the outer. And then you need a piece of wadding exactly the same size as well. So that's what you need for the main bag. We're then going to use some faux leather for the tie, or you can use a corresponding fabric if you want to. But let's get started and make this lovely wine bag. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to adhere your wadding to your lining piece. As you know, I like the June Taylor quilt basting spray. You can use whatever spray you like. So I'm just going to do that now. I really wants it to stick on there well. Just line that up, push it down, and I like to always flip it over and give it a press from the front there, so you can make sure that looks really nice. Construction is really simple. You're going to take your fabric piece, you're going to fold it together so you've got the long edges together here, and you're going to stitch along this edge, and then you're going to stitch along the bottom edge. This top edge needs to remain open, and you're going to do that for the lining piece as well. So let's just get that stitched. This project is so easy, I think that you could probably make this five minutes really quick. So once you've stitched the long side and the base, you want to square off those corners. So, excuse me. So opening up this seam, pulling that apart and it naturally forms a triangle, can you see? So we're going to measure in an inch and we're going to stitch across here and then we're going to repeat it for the other side of the base. So everything you do on the, on the outer fabric you're going to do for the lining. So repeat that on the other side, pulling those seams apart and then doing your inch. You can measure this or you can guesstimate. Then you need to chop off those triangles because you don't need them. So you can use your scissors or your rotary cutter. Just chop those off. And then you've got the basis of your bag. For your lining piece, you need to do the same again, but you need to leave a gap in the side for turning. Now the reason why I say the side and not the base is because the side is longer and it's, you've got a bit more to work with there. The base is very small, so if you have a gap there, it's going to be really fiddly. So leave a gap in the side for turning. I say about three inches. But other than that, the construction is exactly the same. Don't worry about doing any back stitches on that opening because you are going to stitch that, that opening up so it really doesn't matter. Just go stop, needle out, skip forward and carry on stitching. If you don't like wadding you could use a foam on this, you could use a, a firm interfacing. It's entirely up to you. I just like the wadding because I like the softness of it and it sort of reminds me of Christmas, I don't know why. But if you wanted something more rigid then certainly go ahead and do that. Just moving on to the base. Not forgetting those corners. And the other side. If you want to put your hand in this one, just so you can feel your corners, then do. I just think that's a bit easier to put your hand in. Okay, and chopping those corners off again. We're going to turn the lining right side round, like 
like so. And we're going to pop this inside our outer fabric. Now this is still round the wrong way. So what you always need to make sure is that the, the right sides are together. So by turning the lining round and popping that inside there, you'll see that that just fits in nice and snug. And what you want to make sure is that your corners line up with the corners of this. So what I do is I tend to put my two fingers in the top two corners and then I can guide it in. So I like to make sure that the seam sides are together, like so. Slide that in. Again, any odd noises, it's the pug. You'd think she hadn't been fed the way she goes on. Right, so I've lined up those corners, and then just pulling this front down, making sure everything is straight. Now you're simply going to stitch the, all of these layers together all the way around. So it's best to take off the base of your machine, and that will should just about slip over the end of your machine like that, which is really handy. So a simple stitch all the way around the outside, just making sure you've got those, those tops lined up. Perfect. So slipping it over the end of the machine. And stitch away. to get rid of that bulk so we've got quite a lot of wadding sticking up from the seams. So I'm just going to trim that down on both sides using my ruler and just trimming off that excess. You can go quite near to that top stitch if you like. There we go, that's a really nice edge. Now finding the gap, so what we do is we pull out that lining, as you saw we put it in. There's our gap, make sure you go between the layers. And then you're going to simply pull the outer fabric through. So go to the bottom, pulling that through, pulling your lining through, tucking it round, pushing out those corners again. So you've got a long sort of sausage. Then, which one's our lining? This one. So we need to make sure that one's the one that gets tucked back in. So all you're doing is taking that end and pushing it back in to your project, make sure those corners line up again, and they set, they should do because you, you line them up before you stitched. So that's lined up beautifully inside there. Now we've got our bottle bag made, what we're going to do is make the tie. So you can do this in a different fabric if you want to. Um, I'm simply going to use some faux leather. My strip of faux leather is 43 inches from point to point. And all I've done is just line up the ends and I've cut off at a 45 degree angle to make that a really nice end. And the great thing about faux leather is that you don't need to um, finish those edges off. They're absolutely fine as they are. So let's put it all together. So we'll pop our wine inside. And you can see now why we made that base flat. So it holds that wine in really nicely. You can take our tie. I'm going to have to tie this facing me, um, otherwise it's going to be a bit tricky, but I'll turn it round as soon as I'm done. So tie it. Now, of course, you can tie a bow, you can tie a knot. I'm just going to go for a knot. And there we go, one super wine gift bag. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've got another Stitchmas tomorrow, that's day 12, and a really exciting one as well. So please make sure you subscribe, and I hope you'll like the video if you enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed last week's Stitchmas. We ended on the mystery guest one. If you haven't seen that, do make sure you go and have a look over there. Thank you again for all your support through Stitchmas. Um, it's a lot of work, and I really appreciate all your lovely comments and all your feedback. Thanks again for watching. Bye!